Hi everyone, this is one of the math lesson plans I created this school year and this structure worked for my emergent bilingual students in an online learning environment because there is a good balance of activities and a gradual release of responsibility and also linguistic supports. The first thing that I include in the, in the lesson plans for math is the hook or background knowledge check. My students love to play this game called Time to Climb on Nearpod. I think you might know about it, but the most amazing thing about it to me is that it's actually an assessment. You create the questions and the answer choices, and the data is produced and saved automatically. So you can use it in any language, and the kids like it so much because it's set up like a game. They choose their character, and they play against each other, and at the end, it recognizes first, second, and third places, so they get a little competitive. These are some sample questions. This 3D shape rolls, slides, and stacks. And if this was actually during the class, there would be many more students, like many more characters climbing up. This 3D shape can only roll, and it can't slide or stack. So that's just a, a quick example. It goes by really fast. So afterwards, after we play the game, I know I have between 12 to 15 minutes to tap into their brains and their attention spans. So I go right into our language and content ob objectives very briefly. This is something that our school district and bilingual department asks us to implement. And I like it because kids know what we're gonna do and how we're doing it. For example, in this lesson, our language objectives are listening and speaking. Our content objective is to sort and classify 3D shapes we can find in the world, and we'll do this by sharing out. Visuals are also a great tool for both emergent bilinguals and online learning. I keep them the same to avoid confusion. For example, for our language objectives, I keep the same pictures for each, whether we'll be listening, speaking, reading, or writing. The iPad with the happy face means that we'll be working synchronously. And I like to match pictures to our content objectives as well. Oh, and the background is blue because each subject area is designated a different color and blues for mathematics. We start by making a connection to what we learned previously, which in this case was to then identify shapes, cubes, cylinders, and cones by their attributes. And this is our anchor chart. We created it to make cross-linguistic connections, although it doesn't mean that they're just transferring their knowledge from one language to the other. In this unit, most of my students struggle to learn the names of the shapes, even if in their first language or their language of preference. I remember one of my students trying really, really hard to name a cylinder in Spanish, cilindro, and she was like, Cil cilantro, and she said it like very excited. It was very funny, but I realized that a large part of the learning in kindergarten is happening in both languages simultaneously. And that reminds me of another student that noticed that the shapes had very similar names. And she said, Maestra, estas palabras son como tornados. And I was just thinking what she meant. And I asked her, ¿A qué te refieres con tornados? And she explained that they sounded very similar. And I thought, oh, wow. I was just very happy because even if she didn't remember the word cognado, she knows what it means and she can identify cognates. Our bilingual department designated green for Spanish and blue for English. So that's why they're green and blue. In this part, I uh, we're gonna be classifying the shapes. So I, I do one example, and then I have students help me classify one at a time. Sometimes I pick randomly, and others in ABC order. So these are movable. Next, we sort by color and by shape. Then we take a short brain break. Here, they get to go on a field trip to the moon. They can rotate like this. It's a quick brain break related to the topic we're learning. And afterwards, they think pair share about where they would classify the moon in a chart. 
They use the sentence stem to help them think and share using complete sentences. So where would they classify the moon in this chart? Then they go and talk to a friend in their breakout rooms. And when we come back, this is a quiet signal from the movie Soul. They use a raise hand buttons to share with the whole class. I let them decide whether they'd like to share or not, but usually most of them want to share. And to close their lesson, students show what they know independently. In this case, they play a matching game. So they need to match the objects that have similar shapes, cylinder with cylinder. If they get it wrong, for example, it'll let me know in the data. And then everyone reflects on their own learning and they let me know through a poll whether they feel that they can do this on their own or if they need more practice. And that's my sample lesson plan.